Hi, I'm Katie Witt again, and I'm a habit designer, and I'm here to give you an insider tip on habits and behavior. Today, we're going to focus a little bit on one of the aspects of creating new habit, which is triggers. In other words, there's usually some sort of trigger or cue to get you to do a behavior or a habit. For example, uh, maybe you're driving down the street, you love potato chips, and all of a sudden you see a big semi truck with a big old picture of potato chips plastered on the side. That was designed as a trigger to get you to go to buy some potato chips and have some that afternoon. There are built-in triggers everywhere in our environment to get you to do certain behaviors. And a lot of people pay a lot of money to figure out which triggers work the best. I'm here to help you hack how to get triggers to work in your favor for the behaviors and habits that you want in your life. So let's give an example. Let's say you want to start um, going on a morning jog or a morning walk. And um, there's two other areas we want to address, which is motivation and ability. And I'll create videos about that too. But one of the areas that you can address are triggers. How can you develop triggers or cues to do that jogging habit in the morning? One thing you could do is think about your environment. Think through every step that has to occur to get you to do that. You have to wake up. Then you have to decide which running pants to put on and which running shirt and which socks. And then you have to put them all on. And then um, are you going to go before you eat breakfast or after you eat breakfast? Do you have water first or after? Do you, do you um, have a playlist already made? So these are the examples of all the different steps that are required to do a behavior. What you can do is plan in advance each of these steps and set your environment up to trigger you to do the behavior. For example, uh, maybe you go to bed in the very uh, jogging pants that you want to wear in the morning. You don't even have to sit there and think about what to put on. You wake up, you have it on, you're ready to go. You just have to put your socks on and your shoes on. And perhaps you place your shoes in your doorway as you're trying to leave your bedroom. You have to literally chip, trip over your shoes in order to leave your room. Another trigger or cue, hey, you're going to go on a walk now. Perhaps you've decided that you're going to go before breakfast. You don't even have to figure out breakfast. And you've made a playlist in advance with the headphones right next to the phone, right next to the front door. When you see that there, it's another trigger. It's time to go on your job. So these are ways in which you can set up to trigger your, have your environment set up to trigger you to do a certain behavior you want. You can also use this to try to undo a behavior you don't want. How about, for an example, watching TV? Maybe uh, you have a habit of watching a lot of TV and you want to undo the habit of watching a lot of TV. Well, you can use the same idea of triggers to identify what triggers are in your environment to do that behavior. For example, every time you see the remote on the coffee table, it triggers you to want to watch TV. So perhaps you place the TV remote in a different location. And perhaps you make it even more difficult by taking the batteries out of the remote and putting the remote in um, a far away location and the batteries in an even further location so that if you really want to watch TV, you either have to get up and push the buttons on the TV or you have to go find the batteries, go find the remote and then do it. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to engage in the behavior that you actually don't want to do. Perhaps you want to actually play the guitar and practice the guitar rather than watching TV. So then you can make that uh, easier by creating a trigger. Perhaps you place the um, printed up lyrics to the music you want to practice right where you normally place the TV remote. So now you're getting a different trigger, triggering you to play the guitar rather than to turn on the TV. Then perhaps you leave the guitar out in a stand really close by and you see it. And therefore it's another trigger to get you to do the behavior you want to do. So using this methodology, you can really design your environment to either support a behavior you want to do or to make a behavior you don't want to do more difficult. I hope this was beneficial as you try to hack your environment for the behaviors you want. And if you need more help and guidance on how to apply this to your life, feel free to visit my website, habitdesigner.com. First coaching session is free. Thank you very much and be well.